guests, the guests are coming to see Gornitai. And so as representatives of Gornitai, we should uh, receive guests very nicely. Um, <clears throat> so our practical means of, uh, of, offering, uh, of offering a welcome, it is said that um, the very least one can do to receive a guest is to offer some sweet words. So, um, um, so when somebody comes, we should understand that they have taken uh, the trouble to come to see the Lord here in the temple. That means that they have spent their money and they have spent their time. So we should, uh, so we should recognize this, that these people uh, they have chosen to spend their money to come here and they choose to spend their time. So when we think like this, we can feel that, okay, everybody should be treated with some respect because after all, they have made a sacrifice. Even though they may not give a donation immediately when they come, anything like that, we should know that they have spent their money and they have just spent their time just to come here. So simply that fact, that should uh, generate some, uh, some sense of respect for that they have actually made a sacrifice to come here. So that says anybody, even the, being the Indian, just coming to put a few vegetables on the on the plate in front of Gornitai, they've spent their money, they've spent their time. So the very least we can offer them is a Hare Krishna and smile. That's the very least we can do. If we simply neglect and don't even look at them and treat them as if they're not there, we should know that we're committing a great uh, blunder. You know, we're not properly being a representative of Gornitai. And we're doing uh, gonitai shame and justice. If you're not able to greet the guest even with a simple Hare Krishna and a smile, then we should know we're most unfortunate. So that, at the very least, we should be able to do that. And if possible, we should offer them prasada. <clears throat> and uh, so it's very nice that there's always some maha prasada available. So at least we can offer them a little piece of maha prasada that is there, if nothing else. I said, any gentleman who comes, one should be prepared to offer him a meal like that if we can. Um, so, these are some of the ways in which practically uh, we can receive guests. And we should know that that's, at least, that's according to our means. And if we fail to do that, then we're committing a blunder. Then we'll, the result of that is that we will be disturbed in mind, and with a disturbed mind, we will not be able to fix it on Krishna. So that means will be an illusion. Because Krishna says, just fix your mind upon me and engage all your intelligence in me. So Krishna consciousness means to fix one's mind on Krishna. And that is not possible if the mind is disturbed. And the mind will surely be disturbed if one fails to observe this, uh, this etiquette of how to receive guests being a member of uh, Shri Sigurita's household. Uh, <clears throat> so, this is was some of the important um, some some of the important incidents in uh, in Bhagavatam of how one to receive guests, and there's also further uh, there's also further uh, uh, instructions in the in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and there's one inc incident uh, which in which uh, how do you deal with a guest that's ill-behaved? A guest that's not... Uh, he's not really acting according to the proper standard. So how does one deal with such a, such a person? And actually we find there's some valuable instructions of how uh, Lord Chaitanya he would deal when Ramachandra Puri he would come, uh, come to visit I think it was in Jagannath Puri he would come, isn't it? It's quite, yeah. So Ramachandra Puri, he would come, and because Ramachandra Puri, unfortunately, he was rejected by his spiritual master, because he would even correct or point out fault in his spiritual master. So because he did so, he was rejected by Madhavendra Puri. And after being rejected by Madhavendra Puri, he said he would uh, take on this uh, very prominent, distinctive feature of fault finding. He would make. Uh, he would. Uh, uh, establish, uh, create a habit for himself of finding faults with others. And so when he came to Jagannath Puri, he was in this mood of finding fault 
uh, with the devotees. Um, uh, and it described uh, that uh, if somebody, he was at somebody's house and if he saw ants, they would say, there's ants in the house, that means he's, uh, he's eating sweets. <laughs> And uh, and so and so forth, and uh, and it is how how was it more. Uh, he would he would have somebody uh, to to uh, to dine with him, and uh, he would uh, insist that they take more, they take more, and when they would take more, he said, "Oh, see, he's overeating." <laughs> so in this way, he would uh, he would engage in such a way to find out uh, to find out uh, to find out. Uh, False, even in the devotees. But it is said that Lord Chaitanya, even though Ramachandra Puri, he had this, uh, he had this unfortunate tendency uh, in himself. They said that Lord Chaitanya, he would recognize that uh, he is the uh, uh, he is the god brother of my spiritual master, because Ramachandra, Ramachandra Puri was a disciple of uh, Madhavendra Puri, and Ishvara Ishvara uh, Ishvara Puri, is it? He would. Uh, he was uh, also disciple of uh, Madhavendra Puri. So they were god brothers. So the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya, he, uh, his god brother was Ramachandra Puri, and it is said as an etiquette that uh, um, the god brother of one spiritual master should be uh, respected as a spiritual master. The same respect should uh, should be offered to the god brother of one spiritual master. So it is said that Lord Chaitanya. Even when he was, even when Ramachandra Puri was point, pointing out faults in him, he would say, "Yes, you're very right," and he would uh, he would reduce his eating. So while Ramachandra Puri was there, it was explained that uh, Lord Chaitanya he would reduce his eating even, and uh, I can't remember exactly by how much he would reduce his eating, but it is said that something like a, uh, some amount he would reduce his eating. And even though the devotees they were very upset with this, they would say. Uh, upset by the Lord's reducing his eating because it was not he was not overeating. Like Lord Chaitanya, even though we hear Lord Chaitanya, sometimes he would eat great amounts of prasadam because it was offered with love. So, but uh, the devotees became upset with the Lord uh, uh, taking less taking less prasadam. And uh, but it is explained that he would behave like he would behave very cautious, uh, courteously, and he would be very like uh, you know, respectfully behave towards Ramachandra Puri. And then when he had left, when Ramachandra Puri, he had left Jagannath Puri, then gradually again, the Lord became, uh, he again took up his usual practices. So this shows actually this, uh, that this uh, respect and, and etiquette and tolerance, Lord Chaitanya, he personally showed of how, how much this should be there, how trained, how disciplined one's mind should be to observe this. And Lord Chaitanya, he also stated that uh, the Vaishnava etiquette is the ornament of a devotee. So as Lord Jarasandha, he was like very much trained up in the Vedic culture. So this Vaishnava etiquette, this is something we should also uh, aim to be established in. We should aim to be trained and our mind should be very much, uh, you can say, practiced in the, in the Vaishnava etiquette. So that we'll be able even to uh, devotees who are, who are not actually well situated. But we should not become uh, angry or envious towards them. Because that's uh, the immediate fault. If one's mind is not trained up in, in the Vaishnava etiquette, when you see someone who is not uh, acting according to the standard, um, uh, who's uh, in a weak situation, then we will become angry and envious towards them. And being angry and envious, then we will exhibit that anger and envy, and then we will create disturbance. Then we will pick fights with such devotees. And then the result of it is that we will be disturbed, they will be disturbed, and everybody will think that these devotees, they are no better than everybody else. They are also fighting like cats and dogs. So what's the, what's the difference? You know? So the difference is that the Vaishnava who is trained up in Vedic culture, you will be able to set such an example of a culture, uh, that will be the ex example for others to follow. So Lord Chaitanya, he exhibited this in his personal life. And we, of course, uh, uh, can try uh, to cultivate such a standard in ourselves, such an understanding of the Vaishnava etiquette, that we'll be able to deal with tolerance 
and respect, even though in difficult situations, trying circumstances for ourselves. <clears throat> So, this was actually the gist of what I intended uh, to say today. Um, so, I guess we can stop here and take some comments or questions if there's it. Yes? Uh, yes, you were talking about Vaishnava etiquette. Um, and by being in the temple and associating with the devotees, you get an idea about what that is, but is it specifically written somewhere or is it just a little all over the scripture? Actually, I think Bhakti Chaloswami, he has actually collected a, and made a small, uh, small book out of it uh, called Vaishnava Etiquette. And actually, uh, I happened to, uh, to have a small introduction in this book. So it's actually the way in which we can become established in the Vaishnava etiquette is that first of all we need to hear it. Our difficulty may be that we may not even have heard it extensively, what is the Vaishnava etiquette. So we may not even know it theoretically what it is. So if we don't know it theoretically what it is, then how, how can we practice it? So basically one has to be quite uh, like practical that first of all we need to hear what are the items of the Vaishnava etiquette and then we need uh, to observe ourselves how well are we absor uh, observing the Vaishnava etiquette. So the guest reception is just one part of it. And uh, there is a gist, you can say, a very es essential instruction uh, uh, of uh, uh, behavior, like interpersonal behavior, and that's spoken by Narada Muni. So if you want the, the Vaishnava etiquette in a nutshell, so to say, there is this one verse in the Bhagavatam, it's in the fourth canto, 8th uh, chapter, verse 34, uh, where uh, Narada Muni, he says, Gunadi kaan mudam lipsed, anukro sam gunadamat, maitrim samanam anvichen, Na tauper abibuyate. And that means everyone should act like this. When he meets a superior, he should be very pleased. <coughs> um, and when he meets someone uh, who is on equal level with himself, he should make friendships with him, friendship with him. And when he meets someone uh, who is uh, in an inferior position, he should uh, be compassionate, uh, compassionate with him. And when one acts, one for one who acts uh, in this way, he will never be touched by the three, uh, never be disturbed by the three four miseries. Na taper abibuyate. So taper the three four miseries. He will not be disturbed by the three four miseries. So that means that by observing this etiquette, then your mind will be so fixed up that it will uh, not even be disturbed by the three four miseries. That's, uh, uh, you can say, the practice, the yoga practice of, you can say, uh, training your mind up in that way it means that it becomes resilient even to the three four miseries. So we're actually performing yoga here. And yoga, the mind is the essential part. We want to train up the mind. And as Lord Chaitanya said, Chetu Dharpana Marjana. You know, by the chanting, you cleanse the mirror of the mind. So the mind, by practice of devotional service, it becomes strengthened. Or you can say it becomes cleaned and uh, strengthened. So, so this, uh, this is actually in a nutshell. Uh, and it says that if you can, a superior person, if you can be very pleased, and a superior person, that means one who is more advanced, in uh, spiritual knowledge. You can say this is just a personal senior because in the service of Vaishnavas we have the aspect of seniority, which is a quite important aspect. And sen seniority in Vaishnava circles, that's meant from the day of initiation. You can tell a senior by when they were initiated. And uh, so 
when you see a senior person, a seniority, like a superior person, that means one who's senior, and it doesn't even uh, limit itself to uh, initiation, but also a wealth is acknowledged as a superior position, one who's more rich or more, more affluent than ourselves, but simply knowledgeable, a knowledgeable person, one who's very, uh, say knowledgeable, one who's very adept in the scriptures, who's very, so that's also a superior position. He may know more, he may be well, more well versed than ourselves, that's also taken as superior. So, in this way, there are different items which makes a person more superior than us. And when we see such a person, we can know he's a superior person, we should be very happy. And the opposite of that is that when we see a superior person, we're envious. Then we can understand that's the faulty, that's the faulty uh, uh, response within ourselves. So then the equal, uh, equal persons, because we have persons who, they join approximately the same time as us. And... Uh, uh, you know, they're interested in the same things, similar interests and uh, similar age and so forth. Those are considered as equals. And uh, the instruction is that one should establish friendship with equals. So that means you should have friendly dealings, not competing. And uh, the negative tendency, like opposite than that, if we meet equal, what we had a tendency to compete with them. That we want to show ourselves better. We say, okay, he's approximately where I am, so I want to, you know, be a bit better than him because so I can come out, you know, as more prominent. As I said, that uh, uh, enviousness it exhibits itself as comp uh, competing nature in in amongst equals, and that's how uh, you can see that you're envious, that you have a competing, that you want to compete uh, with your equals. And then uh, the last thing is that when we meet someone who's uh, who is in uh, inferior position, like a devotee who is younger than us, or he's not so learned as us, he's not so cultured as us, he's not so well behaved, uh, or something, he's not even so clean as us, then the tendency is that we will kick and disrespect such a person. We will feel disgusted, and we will feel disgusted with such a person. And that's envy. You know, it, envy manifests itself as disgust, and that's a funny thing actually, because it's all envy. Like, you're envious at the superior, you're sorry that uh, you're not happy to receive him because uh, you just feel, you feel a plain envy. And you're c competing with your equals. And you are uh, disgusted with those who are in an inferior position. That's all envy. That's all different manifestations of envy. Uh, so, it is said that instead of dis being uh, disrespectful and disgusted with those who are in an inferior position, one should be compassionate towards them. And that compassion means that you should try to lift them up to a higher standard. Because you being higher, you know something more than them. You're more trained up to them. So you should try to lift them uh, to the proper standard. And that is, uh, that is practice of compassion. So essentially, Vaishnava etiquette is, uh, is that. That's the essence of Vaishnava etiquette. And then you have all the details, all the small little details, which come in and make up the whole Vaishnava etiquette. And uh, Lord Chaitanya, he had Sanatana Goswami to describe all these details, isn't it? That uh, Sanatana Goswami's service was to take care of all these small details. So that uh, one who wanted to really know perfectly well, he should consult uh, uh, like a personality like Sanatana Goswami to get around all the details. And for ourselves, it's done a bit simplified. Because if you just take this little booklet by Charuswami, there's a very good start. So, uh, so for ourselves, we can consult that book, and that we can gain a lot of the details. And it would be beneficial if we could dedicate uh, some time to speak about uh, these details, so we at least know them. Some seminar should be there by some uh, proper, some uh, suitable devotee uh, who gives so give such a seminar. Yeah, I think Keshavriya had a hand, so we'll take that. Yeah, I just think that um, if we could maybe be uh, a suggestion to uh, to Madhavasriya people uh, or like that, that at the weekly house meetings, that um, we could make like a follow up on how the week went and which kind of guests came and how we received the guests and uh, like what we did and which exchanges we had here in the house. We can uh, suggest that at the Friday meeting. And then also find the time for the seminar, like you said. It used to 
used to be a part of the Bhakta program? I guess, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there could be some, uh, I think it would be, it would be beneficial if there could be some arrangement. Like, so Krishna will in devotees will, there could be some. some like I have a number of this uh, book. Excuse me? I have, a, I have a number of the book by Bhakti Charaswan. A number of them? You have several of them? Or? Yeah. yeah. Stack. There should be, there should be some standard, standard equipment for Bhakta or Brahmachari. You should have that book. Uh, or at least access to it. Yeah. Yes. Um, I heard uh, from. Uh, it was a talk with Titania Prabhu and uh, I mean Krishna Prabhu and they talked about uh, Prabhupada's book how it should be the uh, main meal uh, of our studies but then on the side we can have a little chutney resembling the books of other devotees so could this Vaishnava etiquette book be a little chutney on the side? Well definitely yes. it's a very practical thing and it would be a great help to our practical devotional service, practical daily life. So, yes, I think Krishna will think there can be some arrangement that uh, we can go into these topics. So, and another yeah. little thing about this ending manifesting in different forms. Um, sometimes in the street you come to feel a bit disgusted by people. Uh, because frankly they are quite disgusting sometimes. Is that also a manifestation of it? Yeah, uh, you can say that uh, because after after having exhibited that uh, that disgust, you know, how do you feel? Are you in a, are in, are in a good condition to distribute further books, you not know, to go to the next person? You see, so everything that disturbs our mind, uh, that's uh, you know that's unwanted, you know. We don't want our mind to be disturbed like that. So when we feel this disgust, you know, it's it's just a uh, it's just removes ourselves from Krishna. Now we just take steps away from Krishna, and that taking steps away from Krishna, that itself you can see that, you know, that's what we did in the first place. That we left the spiritual world. You know, we just you know cho chose to leave, chose to leave Krishna. So. Uh, uh, you can say the original cause of our leaving the spiritual world is envy. And so whatever we do here in the material world uh, that takes us further away from Krishna, you can say that serves the same, serves the same uh, you can say, result as that. So actually this disgust with others, it comes from our disgust with Krishna. <clears throat> so in that way uh, we can see that this, uh, it comes to be envy. So, the, the, the sad part is that if we feel disgusted with others like that, our minds, the practical result is that our minds disturbed. And in that disturbed condition, we will not be able to uh, perform devotional service. We will have to somehow rectify our mind, we have to balance our mind so again we can direct it. Because the mind is like a tool. If it's sharp and if it's focused, then you can use it. If it's disturbed, like that, you can't use it for anything. You just have to suffer. You, we're just suffering. In a disturbed condition, we're just suffering that disturbance. And then when we get over it, then we can use the mind again and it, it can be directed. So in essence, uh, for book distribution, you just want your mind to remain a sharp and focused tool. You don't want to lose control of your mind. So in that way, we, can't, uh, we can just try to feel what's going on. That if we are disgusted if we, if we exhibit some disgust. You know, was that really helpful? Did that person learn a good lesson, which he wake up, or did he simply also become disgusted and think that, well, that person is also nonsense, like that? So we just see of what we do out there in the street. Is it beneficial or not? Like, is it favorable or not favorable what we do? And then we try to do the, always the favorable things. And that's how the book, book distribution, that's a good training. You can practice this uh, tolerance, the tolerance of people who are in fear position. But almost uh, in the street, most of the people who will come across, they'll be in an inferior <coughs> position. There will also be someone who is in a superior position, and that may be someone who is uh, just affluent, is a materially affluent person. And sometimes affluent, affluent means that uh, he has, uh, you know, opulence. You can say. So sometimes you make the mistake of uh, uh, like a person who is very like cultured in one sense, even though three part of partial, 
it, it, this harava bhakta, so there's no good qualities and none of it. But some, this, uh, this, uh, you may find this uh, quite cultured person. He's a rich and cultured person like that. And if we treat them, uh, you know, just like, uh, okay, we should preach to them and they, they, they like in a fear position. You be, sometimes you find that there's a complete uh, disharmony, there's a complete jarring. And we feel quite odd and awkward, like we did that. So this also applies to the street. Like if somebody is in that more culture than us, they're more like socially aware, and they, they can be a well position, high position person. So if you come across as trying to like uh, put ourselves as a, as a superior, there'll be some there'll be some uh, there'll be some discongruence congruency there, and that's also something we should learn in Sankirtan. We should pick up like this person is that actually more like a higher like position person, and then to recognize that because if you recognize that just a little bit. Then immediately that there's some there's some uh, possible exchange there, but if we come across an uh, imp impudent uh, trying to step over, there's no possible uh, exchange because we have destroyed the possibility of exchange without impudence. So actually, a very experienced book distributor, uh, he's able to pick up on this. So this is a more like a, a well situated gentleman here. So if I give a little recognition that towards his status actually to his actual status, if he, he can understand that we understand actually his position, then the possibility of exchange will be there. But if there's impudence, immediately the exchange will stop, and I will, will not come to that. So actually book distribution that is a very good, uh, uh, it's a very good means to develop this understanding, this final understanding about who is who, like, and how you deal with persons on different, uh, on different levels. So that is, uh, that is one of, uh, that is, that's then book distribution. So that we should take it as a, that's a great advantage that we get to learn this, even though it may be very difficult, it may be very painful, because we are Kali, we always make mistakes, because we are so confused ourselves, you know, we, we are so messed up, so invariably we make mistakes, we commit the errors, same errors, even again and again, but we should know that per the art of it, the perfection, is that we able immediately pick up where a person is and deal with that person appropriately, that's really the perfection of book distribution. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Shila Prabhupada Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai